everybody. Today we got uh, Chris Field Marshal Vandenberg from the War Machine uh, and Blaster Factory with me here today. <laughs> We're going to talk about Return of the Jedi. Uh, uh, scopes <laughs> or as from crucible props <laughs> and we're going to talk about the return of the jedi scopes like the uh the ones that are used on the e11s and the dl44 um han solo is a blaster so um it's been kind of a it's still kind of a a, a mystery i guess it hasn't been uh i don't think it's been released or what the what the, everything is made out of uh, officially but we've kind of been able to piece things together and figure it out over the the time and with some of the reference images especially that showed up in the more recent years we could be able to definitely tell what's what um so let's get to it i mean basically on the han solo deal 44s you have this scope so it was kind of cobbled together from parts or things or made to look like um and I'm M19, which it doesn't really, but from far enough away, you know, it doesn't, you know, from a, a th audience in the theater perspective, it's close enough. That's really all that they needed to do. But yeah. they stuck they stuck that on the, the DL44 and the uh, the Return of the Jedi E11, which is made from an MGC, which I have someone's laying back there, but it's not done, so it doesn't have the scope on top. Um but that's pretty much it. That's really, it's well, it's well, only on the two, know, two things. Well, I, I, I'm glad you dug into it a lot deeper because, you know, just from me, uh, I probably did this scope five years ago when I was first starting to do, you know, uh, the DL44 blaster stuff. So the pictures I had were kind of limited. Yeah. And I guess in the last few years, some really cool shots have come out, especially, I think, wasn't one of them from like an auction or something? Yeah, an auction, yeah. Yeah, that's where we really got to see it, and a lot of things were become clear. So, yeah, the, you were pestering me for the last two years probably to to fix the one I have. So yeah, well, the 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 real thing. I mean, the the only other previous one that anybody did that was really good was Boba Dett from the RPF, and his is pretty spot on too. It's I mean, for the time when it was made, it. The dimensions are almost exactly as yeah. good as we can tell without measuring a real one. But the upside is there's there are plenty of the well, not plenty, but there are enough of these original props in private hands. You know, in Return of the Jedi, they made lots of stuff, and that kind of though the Return of the Jedi stuff just got out there. Um, more people had the Elevens and those uh, Han Solo blasters those MGC ones went up for auction. So we have some pretty decent pictures of those, even though we're, they were in bad shape, but you can still see enough to kind of get a good idea of what everything was. Yeah, those things look really beat up. I mean, you could tell they've been piled up and, and used. Yeah. You know, that, that thing's not even, not even, if I recall, kind of even crooked, you know? Yeah, in fact, right. here, um, let's take a look at these. So you should be seeing my screen now. Yep. So here's the auction. Here's the auction blaster. Um, and it's it's great. It's perfect for what we need to see. And it showed, it, it told us a lot um, about how it was constructed. Let me try and get some pictures of the scope. Are there any decent ones? Yeah, that's a good one from underneath there. There's one here. And they made many of them especially for the uh, the stormtrooper blasters. So what we can see here is there's this plastic cap. It looks sort of like a film canister. Um, that's what I thought it was for a long time. Uh, it looks like a film canister, but it's not. Uh, I think it's been discovered what it is. I don't know if that's been publicly released yet. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't heard that either. I've heard a lot of theories, like you're saying. Uh, I'd also noticed that on top of like a butane canister you know you fill a lighter with yeah it's very similar to that especially with that little spot in the top of it yeah you know so i mean there's no telling they yeah. they must have found some caps off of something because they made a lot of them well it, well we'll look at that here in a second but the back part now there's two different kinds there's there's 
there's this that looks like it's a real scope and you can see that the glass has been you know sprayed over as well you can see there's glass you can see there's a retaining ring and everything um and then there's one there's one that's probably more common because i imagine they didn't cannibalize scopes so many scopes when they can just machine a delrin fake one and there is a picture of a delrin fake one but i don't think it's public so i'm <laughs> i'm not sure if i can show that so we'll, we won't show it but you can definitely see it's machine delrin in the back um and then the front there is a picture is there a good picture the front here we have the little cap so this um the front cap is made up of one of the windage knob uh cover caps from a boba fett style scope 4x20 scope or 4x15 scope and a slotted screw that's been milled just has some extra cuts in it to make it look like um kind of a reflector piece but that's all it is it's, it's just a screw like a 10 well, by 32 know, screw i thought it was a reflector piece. that's what everybody kept saying and you know i made that little piece but i i, I tell you you know let me get it in the view here if that'll show up let me bring back our, our regular screen and stop sharing so we can there we go no that that little piece there yep we get it to focus on it and then in some point and we didn't you know I thought it was a reflector too. That's what everybody thought it was until we finally saw one up close and we're like, hey, that's a screw. Yes, yeah, it's, a, it's no. actually a, a flathead 1032. And uh I guess they took a they took a file, you know, and and, and went back and forth and yeah, and I and I mimicked it in, uh pretty closely, you know, with I did it with CNC, you know, with an engraving tool back and forth. Yeah. It, it might be a little too neat. You might need to to tear it up the one i did myself i just put it in the device on the mill and just had it at an angle so the end mill could just cut it at the, the corner yeah and, and that's, that's all i did the pass pass and then turned it that way and then pass pass and that was it yeah um yeah because they're not slots they're, they're they're kind of a v-groove like you would yeah have like a v-groove and this yeah. is what a film canister looks like and it's got the little yeah. hole dent on the bottom too and i swear some of the fuji ones match up pretty close too but i'm i'm told it's not a film canister it's something else it's a cap of some sort but yeah. uh i thought that, that, that that's probably from uh, a blow mold that's what that marks from, from yeah blow mold. yeah but so they did use some looks like they did use some um real scope back ends at least that one you know that one's but I imagine for the Return of the Jedi one, this, the, I mean, the Stormtrooper ones, they just had ma machined out a bunch of Delrin pieces because there's no way they're going to, it's much quicker to do that than cannibalize scopes. Yeah, 100 scopes. I don't know. It seems like I'd seen a picture somewhere, you know, in the archives where there's like, you know, 50 Return of the Jedi rubber and resin blasters all over the place from yeah. the filming. So, and MGC ones too. And uh, yeah. even these. Even these uh, these Han Solo style, I think there were, I have to count them again. Uh, I think there's four, at least four or five, right? At least. So there, the, well, there's some pictures here. Hold on. Um, let me see if I can share these real quick. I think lots of people have seen these. Um, so these, this is from the original prop log. I have, I have up resed and cleaned these up color wise but this is this the same or one of the same props in much better condition way back in the day yeah um here's the one the famous one without the front ends and you can see that that's a real scope that's just been cut off right yeah they're the rivet or whatever it yeah you can even see the rivet hole yeah so all these were different in their own ways uh, some of them had one mount. Some of them had two mounts. The flash hider seemed to be cut a little bit different. The mill marks on the sides are all different. Yeah. Yeah, the every the flash hiders. I I spent a long time working with that. I still keep improving those flash hiders. With, yeah. You know, the different slots and things in those. You can see the, the original scope right there with the anodizing that's yep. been painted over. 
Yep, and I yeah, go back to that one, Scott. This one. Yeah, if if you notice around where the scope mount is, it looks like there's another. It's like a set of scope rings, or you know. In yeah, the, like in an adapter. Spacers. Yeah, and I did that for a long time with my, you know, my old original. You know, I have those two pieces that clamp around there to to give it that look. Yeah, and then there's the one that's Delrin, and you can see it's actually machined as part of it. Part of it, yeah. Well, that that's kind of what I ended up, you know, doing on the replica too. Is is actually having the, the machine part a part of it. And here's the stem bridge. Uh, way long ago, but still looks the same pretty much. And the stem bridge is the one that has the machine Delrin back end. Yep, and a little brass eyepiece. Yeah, and the brass eyepiece, and the stem bridge is the only one with the brass one, as far as we can tell. Yeah. Oh, the my machine cap. I did it, and of course, this is aluminum. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted to talk about because the new version is looks just like the real thing. Yeah. It's got the little line on it. It's got the dimple in it. It's yeah. even. It's even. Even though you can't see it, it's hollowed out like it's supposed to be, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, and, and you you had me get that. I had to engrave that little. I guess it's where the blow mold, where the yeah, mold the mold line. line mold line and then the divot and that and, uh, sells it for sure to me yeah and then then you use the you had me use the screw connect everything together and, and that's exactly in. how it is in that auction one you can see it because there's one where it's sticking out and you can see that it just that's how they had it in there i don't know if they put a nut on the inside or it probably did I don't know. I mean, that goes in there pretty hard. I mean, but if but if this is just plastic, you know, on the original prop, there has to be something for it to hold on. It must be or a, a glue. nut. Yeah, or, yeah. or glue. Yeah. Just fill it with hot glue or something. Yeah. yeah they usually didn't make things very rugged. Um, also, you know, another thing I did too, you have to cut off the scope. You know, yeah. Yeah. And I do. I, I sell those too. I've I've got one here that's yeah. cut down, and they got to be cut down a little bit lower than that base where the the ring is. Yep. Those are fun to hold in the mill. <laughs> yeah, they're funky. But yeah, I like those grips on that. Are they what are is that? This this is the MGC. MGC. This yeah. is the MGC. There was a I just painted them black. These, so this one on my stem bridge. Um I got lucky and found these on eBay. Exactly almost the thumb relief is cut a little bit deeper than the original prop, but these were cut exactly the same way as those weird ones on the stem bridge. Well, I tell you what, I I've looked for real ones too. I've never seen them. I mean, the replica that I make of that, I have to, I had to copy, you know, from pictures because yeah. I can't find those. I got anywhere. totally lucky. I just was, I just happened to search one day and I saw them and I was like, oh my God, I <laughs> buy, <laughs> buy right now. Cause you'll yeah. never, it's, they even have, you can even see in the brass, the little cut marks, just like on the Stembridge one, which is there are, there are high res pictures of the Stembridge one, but they're private. Um, as far as I know. I know one or two have been released, but I'm not quite sure which ones. So I'm not going to put them up. Um, but yeah, I got really lucky with those. But yours, I, I have some someplace. But anyway, yours are more correct because of the, the top thumb cut, the thumb relief or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's yours is like the prop. Mine is, you know, but they're real. They're old. So and they don't fit as good. Cool. But uh it they was must just, have hand fitted all those things back yeah. when they were making them. Because, yeah, I, I get that call a lot where somebody's trying to find real grips off of eBay to to put on replicas, and they it's don't. It's a crapshoot. Yeah, they don't fit, and especially if you buy all that Pakistani stuff. They're, I own all those. I I don't know what they're good for. I, they don't even fit my bolos. So. Yeah, they're uh, they're they're all odd. They're all and they they each grip was numbered to the gun, so they were hand fit or. They had to be carved for it. Yeah. Yeah. Individually. <laughs> and what's funny is they don't fit other guns. Yeah. 
Like yeah. I have a few Mausers and they don't, they're not interchangeable. They'll nope. kind of fit, but the gaps, there'll be gaps and stuff where the others, the ones that are meant for it don't. Yeah. You got to do a little woodworking when you do that. Yeah. So. Which yeah. is, so it's not really worth it. You can make the the new ones look like the old ones, but yeah. I get it. I get why people do it. I, I did it. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. They're not, well, those are rare anyway. That's a lucky find. Yeah. Especially on the stem bridge, which, you know, that's the most, you know, seen, you know, of any of the DL-44s, the most fighting, most shooting. Yep. You know, I so. think a lot of people forget that. It's got the most screen action time of all of yeah. them. Yeah. There's a lot of character to that one. And you know what? After after going into detail doing this replica, which I won't say this, you know, we never make the final version of anything, but, you know, as of now, I mean, it's, it's a pretty nice little, you know, it, it's actually interesting, especially with the way the screw is and all yep. the, the little mold details. I mean, that's a, that's turned out to be a really nice little prop. It's, it's, it's sort of come into its own. So for sure, you know, uh, the stem bridge definitely needs to be looked at. I, I, I spent a lot of time educating people on that one because they don't know what it is, but they've seen it on screen more than any of them. More know? than any of them. Yeah. It killed more stormtroopers than any of them. <laughs> yes, absolutely. He even got a headshot with it <laughs> you know, yeah. in, the, in the movie. Yep. I remember seeing that. I remember when I was like, whoa, it's shot that dude in the head. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's great that it's actually a live fire, yeah. you know, it was a blank firing. Right. Yeah. So and that's privately not, owned. That's someone, those, someone has that ones or whatever, you know, I think he liked to do that in those battle scenes or whatever for realism. He liked to feel something that actually moved when he shot it. Yeah. I can imagine that's much easier to act with. Yeah. Yep. But you know, the MGCs did their part too, but I'm pretty sure they just, uh, they were either in a holster or they weren't used. They were used, but and you see, it's funny. There's one scene where um, after they're taken prisoner and the stormtroopers holding it, and then um, the Ewoks come and save the day. And then you see, I think, I can't remember how, I have to look at the movie again. I don't want to do it while we're on the video, but I want to say one of them is on the ground while Han Solo picks up another one, so there, or or something like that. There's two in the shot, same shot at the, at the oh, same time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember exact scenario, but there, I know there's two in the same shot at one time. That's kind of funny. But you don't well, know all, which one. All this, I, I haven't put these on the website yet, but um, I know I, I think you've got a couple of them for your build so far. I'm going to make them an option because I think on the economy build. You know, when I'm doing the Denixes, I think the little simple one, you know, for the cheaper ones. But I think that on definitely on anything that they get this aluminum or steel, yeah. if they get one of the builds there, you'll automatically get this, you know, improved version. So yeah, that's good. It's not much different. Side. It's it's a uh, so here's the two next to each other, the older one and the newer one. The scale is slightly different, but if you don't see it next to each other, you can't tell. Yeah. Well, difference between a two hundred sixty nine dollar prop and a eight hundred dollar prop, too. Right. It's minuscule. The difference. <clears throat> well, in the grand scheme of things, it's minuscule. But to us nitpickers, it's it's like huge. Oh my god. You know? Well, I you know I I often have to balance you know the uh, the entry level person you know what they're get them started in it you know. Once you get them down the rabbit hole, they'll start moving up. Right. You know, with that well, stuff. That's another thing. I don't think people will quite understand why one is more expensive than the other. The newer one has more operations to do it. It costs more time to make it. And that's why it costs more. It's, yeah. you know, this is. And it's a, not much more. It actually, you know, I, I bet you this thing, you know, cost wise is another 10 or $15, you know, yeah. and I'll probably in reality, these will probably get phased out. And as soon as I phase them out, somebody will still want them, but you know, they'll, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah. But you know, there is a, there is a cost difference. They're, they're all, they're completely different. The width. Yeah, I, I really like how it goes together in the front. It, yeah. it makes sense. Now I have never liked that theory about it was a piece of reflective material. It just was too small. You know, they kept saying it was some kind of from the light fixtures. Yeah. It was something was cut out or, 
I thought I, I used to people used to think that it was like you know the inside of a bicycle reflector. Yeah, reflector. it was one of those. Yeah, yeah. It just never made sense. I you know I tried to do that when I was hearing it. And I could never cut one that didn't break. You know right. to make something to to go in there to look like that. And I'm glad we we got that because I like I like that little screw. I think it looks really neat. Well, yeah. And by the way, if you um, I, I do it in stainless so that I can machine it, you know, now, and probably if you've done it by hand, you realize, you know, there's a, you know, a lot of times people think stainless screws are really strong. Well, they're not. <laughs> the stainless screws are softer. When you get a black oxide steel screw, they're hard to cut. They're about as yeah. hard as the tools are. Right. But what I do is uh, I'll heat this up with a torch red hot and that thing will turn this, it'll, it'll actually turn black. And then you can hit it with, uh, with bluing and it'll actually, It'll actually black out. Oh, right I didn't there. know that. Yeah. The one I, this one I did myself was zinc. It was one of those zinc screws. Yeah. And then, yeah, the one you have is. Stainless. Hey, well, you know what? I think zinc, uh, those zinc plated ones, you hit it with a torch where it turns red hot. Burn the zinc off of it. Go do it outside where you don't inhale it. Uh, burn that off of it. And then that let it cool off. And when it's still warm put blue uh the uh gun black gun blue or whatever yeah the, 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 uh, the, the zinc plating will blue too yeah it'll, right. it'll stay it's nice yeah so the rest of it's already you know already anodized you can paint over it or or do whatever you want which i think is that. perfect it's one of those things you know there's a lot of talk about uh usually i advocate for getting stuff raw like a raw metal but in this case we know that the original part was black the front cap at least we think i think it's black it looks like it's black yeah a lot of the scopes were anodized yeah. black so you know it, it makes more sense to do anodized in this case yeah you don't do anything to it now yeah. now the rivet on top the, 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 we can still see that that's still just you the, can the, still see it but i think they were all painted over okay it looks like at least in those one pictures you could see that the paint on the back was just kind of scuffed off and stuff which adds to the weathered look Right. And I, and I haven't done that on this one yet. I just need to spray it and then take it off. Right. Cause that, that didn't, that wouldn't last on that part anyway. That's going to rub all, all, all kinds of stuff, but yeah. Slide in and out of the holster or whatever they're using. Yeah. So. Well, man, that's awesome. I'm glad we, it's, we, we waited too long to do a video. You know, we got to, yeah, start, it's been a while. The, yeah. We're I just so been, busy. I haven't been doing stuff on Patreon or, or, um, or even YouTube much. I've just been getting stuff done and sending it out, but I need to get back in the swing of things. Well, I'll tell you, I am neck deep in stuff. I mean, the last video I was talking about, we were doing Leia and I'm doing the bow casters. And you know what? I, I have actually got all of these cast. They're, they're awesome. Well, and now I've got them machined, you know, to where they're ready. I'm ready for the bow part, which should get here in the next two or three weeks, having them bent up and the stop top mount part. I mean, I'm thinking by the end of the end of June, the bowcaster project will be over. And, you know, for what, you know, for what that is costing or going to cost a, 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 uh, a builder, um, quit buying those stupid fiberglass ones off of eBay for $300. That's ridiculous. They don't even the right shape. This thing's, you know, uh, this is going to be a very reasonable build. A lot of people are going to be shocked. This is going to be a very reasonable build. So that's happening, neck deep in that, and then Leia. I, I sent you some right. pictures from the other yeah, day. Let me take a look the machine at those. Where we're at with the Leia frame. And this is actually, this is not at my shop. It's actually a buddy of mine who, who has started a shop and he bought him a, uh, a almost a million dollar machine, a five axis uh -huh. machine. And, and this is his project that uh, I've handed off to him. And, and that's where, you know, he, that's a, one of the first prototypes we're working going through the operations. Look how back the smooth that back strap is on that yeah. <laughs> grip. Yeah, it's getting there. there. There's a lot to this little guy here. This is the heart and soul of the entire build. And there's a lot of deep holes. And uh, as, as time goes on, you know, I know the uh, uh, a a big lot machine of understand some of the intricacies of this, but this literally is going to be a way more complex build and a whole lot, I mean, there's just some really awesome little mechanisms inside this thing that are gonna blow your mind how this thing works. And 
and uh, we've got a, a ways to go to get to that. But I hope to be done with it sometime into June, July for that too. So it's moving along. And of um, course, I, I think I already showed everybody I've, I've got the, the grips, you know, they're already, that was a, a problem. You know, I was waiting on a lot of things to get these things molded and they're done. So now that we got the frame, we make sure all that lines up. So. I just want to call attention to how big this damn machine is because you see the frame way down here, this tiny little, yeah. And that jig and is, is that whole yeah. thing on an axis? Yeah. The no, whole, no, see, that, there's a, there's a carriage, you know, that's on a trunnion table and also it'll go 360. So, you know, this thing can flip all directions. Literally that's become a two operation part. Most of the ops are done done because you see how it's being machined this way yeah. you know, like it's doing now but see it'll it also turns. turn to where they can do the side of it and the, and the other side of it and flip it up front and back i mean it's it's crazy and uh the the, the my buddy that's got this machine holy crap man they're expensive i it's bet just, but you know what it looks like it would save a lot of time and fixtures and moving stuff around and setting up you know stuff well, you know that that's the that's the argument for spending that kind of money, and uh, I hope that works out. Uh, man, I tell you what, though, the the setup times and, and getting all that stuff right. I mean, it's like you've got to do all the operations and all the R and D and all the, you know, the uh, the, the testing and, and and cutting and all at once. And you know, I he's already about two weeks into just getting all that stuff rolling. So, you know, <laughs> hey. They love to do it. It says machine. I could yeah. have bought 12 machines out here for what that cost. So, wow. Yeah. But yeah, yep. that's another thing. Realize everybody, these things don't just fall out of the sky. I mean, there's some serious business goes into machine and this stuff. Yeah. Well, especially if you're doing a lower number of stuff too. Well, you know, this, this, uh, that's Margle and pistol. I'm probably, I'll probably do a thousand of them to start. You know, I want to, I want to try to, I, I, I'm trying to keep the price down, you know, and I do it through volume, which, you know, there's, there's, I guess there's a side out there that says, oh man, your stuff's expensive. Well, let me tell you, you know, if I wasn't doing the stuff and the builds like the, the steel Mauser and the Mando and all these, you know, the, the, the Webley, if I didn't do them in 500,000, 2000 quantities, they'd be triple the price, you know? And uh, it's, it's all relative to that. And the longer I make them, the more successful the line is, the more I, often I can make them, you know, that, that kind of bumps down too. You know, even though the world's going to shit right now and the aluminum's twice what it used to be, that's still, you know, the volume helps, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, I, you see it with the lightsabers too. People have them, they're still trying to go to China for that stuff. China's dead and I'm glad. Uh, I'm actually building uh, seven paintball guns right now. And a lot of people don't realize that uh, uh, me and Mike Wood, you go back almost 27 years in the paintball business. And this technology with all these spool valves, sleeve valves, balance pressure valves, low pressure, me and him innovated all that stuff. And uh, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to start debuting some stuff to, to, to show what we've done because, you know, of course the big corporations are the one that get credit for all that stuff, but Speaking of Mike, that's Mr. Airwolf himself. Uh, uh, that's that's another thing that's, that that you know keeps me busy too. You know, yeah. Bo Castor Leia paintball guns, t-shirt launchers, holy crap! Speaking of the Leia again, uh, everybody watching this, yeah. make sure to go back and find the other video and answer the secret question, comment and like, and do all the other stuff that we say in that video if you want to win one. Yep, because yep. we're giving one away. Yep, and that that'll be a that'll be a big deal on that, Scott. I can't wait for you to see the inside because I know you have a Marlin. Most everybody in the world out there, you know, is familiar with the Leia Blaster, but the inside of that mechanism, I, I I don't even know how to put into words how impressed I am with that build. You know, I'm serious. I mean, the the little mechanisms and the things that move to make that thing shoot. And there's a little linkage that goes down the back strap that you haven't even seen. You don't even know it's yeah. in there because it's you can't get that stuff apart really without yeah. knocking <laughs> pins Mom's out. Come apart that far. I'm, you know, as impressed as I am with like the the Luger and 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 the, the Mauser, which you know had to had to do for Star Wars here. Uh, but man, I tell you what, this Marlin, I hope everybody really gets to enjoy the intricacies of that uh, of that blaster because. 
you know, I could have made it a lot simpler and a lot more non-functional and just had the outsides kind of looking the way they do. You know, I, I think Masters Replica kind of did that, right? Yeah, yeah. And then nothing moves on it. Right. But the parts in that thing are so cool. I just hated not to do it, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, it adds a quite longer. a bit of character to the thing you, because in the end, I think you've said it before, these are adult fidget spinners, more or less, you know, we, we sit here, click them. And you can't do this with a real gun. It's, yeah. It's dangerous, irresponsible, and it'll hurt stuff, but you can do this all day with your replica. Yeah. Well, you know, I was on the phone this morning and a, a, a gentleman had called me and I think he was in Finland or something. And, you know, he's been collecting my stuff one at a time. And it's, I mean, wow, thank you. I mean, holy crap, somebody around the, around the world appreciates what you do. But, you know, if, if I, I want people to spend money on these things that they actually have bought something worth keeping. Yeah. You know, and it's, and, it's, it's like even, and that's what and you do the same thing. I mean, when you do, when you do your commission builds, you know, you, you want it to, to be something that they can't do every day. Right. You know? I mean, it sits on the shelf most of the time, but when you pick it up, you can do this. It's a simple, <laughs> silly little thing that just, you're just sitting there, you're clicking yep. it and it's not hurting anybody. It's not dangerous. It's just for fun, but yeah. you know, it can do it. And then you can open it up, <laughs> you know, it's, oh, you wow. didn't have to do that. You, it was awesome. you can't do that when you've got the ESB one, can you? Is something in the way when you do that one? You can still do it. Okay. Right. Nice. But there's no point to it. <laughs> Just you can do it. Well, that's like the flare gun does that, yeah. not the E3, but yeah. Yeah. I think I I think my real one still does it. Now we're just now I'm just showing off, but well, show off. People don't get to see this stuff every day. This bastard's heavy, though. Yeah, so here's the ESB one out of real parts. It's harder. There we go. Yeah. But yeah, it's just. Yeah, I was wondering if you're, uh, if the little Grabley's on the side. But I mean, I. I Mine are magnetic, so they move around yeah. all the time, but it really just sits on a shelf. Yeah. But, That's awesome. But this one. I kind of, I don't know, I go back and forth on which one I like more. This one has more creativity in it, I think. It looks more like a space gun. Yeah. This one looks more like something cobbled together. Yeah. Still looking for those clamps. Still trying to find the real clamps for real the clamps. ESB, though. Yeah. But, and I think a lot of people were worried that this would be aluminum. It's still pretty darn heavy. It's yeah, it's still heavy. tough to troop with it. Yeah. Well, I'm actually, I, I uh, something in the future, which, you know, not that I'm busy or anything, but I did kind of get prepared, you know, oh. what do they call this on the E4 or whatever? Oh, yeah. I didn't know if it one. had a new name. <laughs> I think it's the E4. I don't know. But uh, I've, I've seen where, you know, some guys were starting to 3D print them and they've got it so wrong again. And uh, I've, 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 I've dealt with this part of it. And uh, I'll have to deal with a few more pieces of it, but yeah, you know, maybe next year I'll get that one back out for when the, when the season starts back up for that. So. That'd be cool. And it's actually, it's actually a really nice looking blaster. There's some yeah. really cool stuff on it. I can't wait to do it. You know, they've actually done a good good job on these on the props. You know, from from Mandalorian and Boba Fett. You know, yeah, because. You know, we've we've seen a few movies where they can really do some garbage. You know, <laughs> so. right? Well, yeah, the, those three movies just forget about it. I, I they, yeah, they, they. I don't think they understand that people are paying attention to those bills. You know. No, and then then there's this. This is yours, your steel one. Yep. This, this same thing. You can sit here and click it. And I'm yep. so glad you did that because it's, it's well, just it adds something to it. You know what? I, 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 there's only, I made 100 of those of which I think about 95 to 97 of them are actually out in the world. Um, the steel one. There's a, there's, is that the first one? I think I sent you the first one. I don't know. I can't remember. I wrote it down. 
But the last one I sold, I actually engraved on the bottom of it my name and the date. Oh, and, cool. And uh, some builder there got that one. So, you know, that way when I'm dead and the stuff's actually worth something, you know, 100 years from now, maybe. <laughs> cool. But yeah, there's that was a tough, that was a tough thing to machine. Yeah, it's not, a huge hunk of steel. Yeah. Yeah, not, not machining the steel blasters is, is hard. But it's worth it. You know, there are people that will go that extra mile. It's them. worth it when you pick them up and you're handling them. Yeah. Because it's just, there's, it's nothing wrong with aluminum. Aluminum is great. You can make it look awesome. But there's something about the feel, the smell. It's got a smell. Blued steel and, you know, oiled steel has a smell. Yep. You know. So... Well, it's like I always tell you, Scott, I can, when, when I make a prop and uh, used to crucify me, you know, everybody, the, the, the elites, the, the, the builders done a long time want the unanodized, uh, the anodized ones will sell a hundred to one. Yeah. You know, well, in this case, I think it's a better, it's a, the better option. Yeah. On this, I, I'm not even going to offer it unanodized probably. Um, but yeah, it's just, I, I think the builders like the base, even in the, aluminum mando i thought about even making a kit where the things were already anodized and they could glue it together too uh they i don't know why they're so scared of spray paint it can look really terrible it can you can yeah you know most star wars props you you hose them down with black spray paint you're done yeah there's no there's no right and wrong way you know it depends on how how accurate you want to be even you know there's just whatever you like really well, you know, I, uh, I know we're getting long in this video. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to send you, you got a Boba Fett uh, replica pistol headed your way. Okay. Uh, we we'll have to talk about that when you get it. And also I've got my little nephew who's uh, basically in, uh, in first grade coming in to put it together and spray paint it. And, uh, and uh, John, my brother-in-law, who's the graphics guy here, that's his son. And, uh, and he's uh, this, uh, his name's Sawyer, and he has never spray painted or built anything like this. You know, they're on the little iPads playing all day, you know, playing all these games and shooting. I said, Well, you're going to build one. And he's never used any tools or Allen wrenches. And, and uh, this ought to be fun. Hmm. You know, talk about a disaster with spray paint. There's the potential, potential for some bad stuff here. So maybe, but I bet, I, next, bet he'll, he'll take, I bet he'll have some pride in doing it and make it good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I also want to uh, try to get everybody to understand that you can do this. You know, we try to educate people so that they they can you know get involved with it. You know, if you're too busy to to build something and you want it at, at top level, you know, finish and weathering, you need to talk to Scott. You know, that's what he does. But you know, there's also some stuff that people can do themselves too. You know, yeah, yeah. And there's if you no... mess it up real bad, you send it to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some things come. I'm like, I can't fix this. Paint stripper. Paint, yeah, you can always strip something, but once you alter metal, <laughs> it's kind of hard to re read fix yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's a, that, that is the life we choose. That's what we do. So yeah. And I'd rather be doing it in metal than doing it on some 3d printed thing, you know? Yeah. Well, all right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. We're going to, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Yes. See ya. All right.